expect ESG funds to outperform uh, in volatile times or, or in fact, uh, when markets are less volatile? Certainly, ESG funds have outperformed during volatile times. And part of the reason for that is that they have management teams generally that are well able to deal with these issues or they've invested in companies with management teams that do well during periods of crisis. So, John, how, how has the ESG investing focus changed at all as a result of COVID-19, the pandemic, the shutdown, and, and the fact that the whole world has changed? Well, we're learning a lot about company management and their ability to deal with crisis during this time period. We're getting real-time evidence in terms of whether or not the policies and procedures that companies have in terms of how they'll deal with their employees, their supply chains, and the communities in which they do business will actually play out during a real crisis. So as we get this information, we're able to bake it into investment decisions that we're making day to day. So it's gone from something that is looking at policies and procedures to something that is looking at real-time behavior as it plays out in front of us. Um, John, I was wondering how, how prominent on the list of things you consider as, a, as an ESG investor uh, equality is, clearly very much in focus uh, of late, particularly racial uh, inequality. I, I wonder whether it, it gets enough of a focus, uh, whether being only a, a subtopic, I guess, of the E, the S and the G and not uh, its own uh, uh, part of the acronym, uh, should it be promoted? Certainly, we know that corporations have a major role in informing social outcomes in this country and all over the world. And the fact is that the way companies are dealing with both the COVID-19 crisis as well as the racism and inequality that's present in this country are having an impact on how consumers perceive their brands. It's also having an impact on how employees perceive a company as an employer. So, no, it hasn't received enough focus in the past, but it's front and center today. John, can you name some names for us of, of who you see as best in class in this area, especially in the COVID age? I think Walmart is a very interesting example. It's a company that might not come top of mind to many ESG investors because it's a company that has gone through significant change over the past five or six years. And, you know, ESG investing is about positive change, not just identifying companies that are doing well today, but engaging with companies to help drive them to do better. And Walmart is a company that has gone through positive change. Talking to the company, they will tell you that their experience during Hurricane Katrina really taught the organization about the important role that they can play in responding to crises. They were essentially a frontline responder during Hurricane Katrina, getting essential goods to people who needed them. That had a cultural impact on the company. And since then, the company has done things differently in terms of how they relate to their employees, where they had problems in the past, but seem to have taken significant steps to solving those issues. And they've really changed their brand and changed their reputation in the communities where they do business. So that's a very good example of a company that's gone through change They've also responded well to the COVID-19 crisis in terms of how they're dealing with their staff, dealing with store hours, creating safety for customers. Mm -hmm. So that's a, an interesting story. And, of course, the stock has done very well during this period of positive change. John, clearly uh, all of these factors are very much on the agenda now. I, I wonder what you think as to where we will be in five years or even ten years' time. Will all... S&P 500 companies by then be fully ESG compliant, if, if that's the phrase to use, such that, in fact, ESG as an asset class will sort of become uh, defunct, and a thing of the past, and, and, and all uh, asset managers, uh, AUM, will be in ESG type uh, companies because all the companies will have uh, adapted in a way that, that perhaps we'll be able to applaud in five or ten years' time. It's a great question. And, you know, ESG is really about companies innovating and adopting to change. ESG really, to us, measures how well a company can keep ahead of the changing desires and needs that society places on corporations. So I do think that already 
most companies are addressing ESG in some way, shape, or form. But we're at the very early stages. So your question about where will we be in five or ten years is an interesting one. Companies are going to continue to address this in different ways internally. They're adopting and innovating. And today, we even see companies beginning to compete with each other, compete with each other in terms of burnishing their brand and uh, dealing with their operating costs by being better and better at managing their human capital, their natural capital, as well as, of course, their financial capital. So I don't think it has an end game. I do think that most investors and most companies will be addressing this. John Stoyer, thank you very much for joining us to talk about it.